Wildlife and forest crime is devastating our planet's biodiversity, promoting widespread corruption and encouraging instability. Throughout the world, wildlife is being trapped, gunned down, poisoned or slaughtered, while forests are stripped of their trees. Let me provide some facts and support. 22,000 wild elephants killed yearly in Africa. Only 3,000 tigers left in the wild, while 110 killed every year, and just 25,000 rhinos left. These crimes are driven by the desire of the traffickers and poachers for profits that can be laundered or plowed back into many other crimes, such as human trafficking. Wildlife crime is worth between 8 to 10 billion US dollars globally every year, while trafficking in timber only from Southeast Asia to European Union and Asia is valued at 3.5 billion US dollars. In this tragic cycle, if this tragic cycle is to be broken, we must act quickly and decisively. Already, some endangered species are standing on the edge of oblivion. I suggest three critical areas that deserve our full attention. First, together with the other partners of the International Consortium on Combating Wildlife Crime, we must complement essential conservation efforts by strengthening our integrated law enforcement approach. This means encouraging nations to do the following based on the UN Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime and the UN Convention Against Corruption. Treating wildlife crime and forest crime as serious crime. Addressing deficiencies in legislation that prevent prosecutions. Delivering training for law enforcement, prosecution services and the judiciary developing greater cooperation and coordination among countries, and seizing the criminals' assets and profits. Second, we must challenge the demand for wildlife and timber products by raising awareness among governments, civil society, and ordinary consumers. Myths about health and medicine needs to be replaced by scientific-based facts. We must also engage with young people to stop them becoming next generation of consumers. And third, this crime has a powerful development dimension. Too often, vulnerable communities are involved at source in this crime because they have few other economic opportunities. As the international community moves forward the post-2015 development agenda, we need to continue with the vital work on building prosperity where at present there is only poverty and inequality. Such efforts are also part of the overall efforts to eliminate wildlife and forest crime. As a part of this response, UNODC is forging ahead with its own plans in partnership with iQuick partners. We're using an analytical wildlife tool already in Bangladesh, Peru, Gabon, and Nepal. We're developing good practices for DNA and other forensic identification techniques. We're holding workshops on anti-money laundering techniques, focusing on the research and analysis of wildlife and forest crime. And just recently, we launched our new global program for combating wildlife and forest crime. UNODC will continue to do more in the future, but through success, can only come through a joint response that integrates our core competences through greater coordination and cooperation.